after the permission of US, Ukraine is preparing to hit the Crimean Bridge with long-range missiles. Russia knows its Crimea Bridge is doomed, which is forcing it to rely on a new railway for its military, according to a Ukrainian official. Dmitry Pletenchuk, a spokesman for Ukraine's Southern Military Command, made the statement to The Economist. It came after the US supplied long-range ATA CMS to Ukraine, putting higher-value targets, including Crimea's Kirsch Bridge, in Ukraine's crosshairs. The new army tactical missile systems have a range of 300 kilometers. Russia stopped using the Kirsch Bridge, which links Russia to occupied Crimea via rail and road to transport military hardware sometime between February and mid-April. According to build analysts, the Ukrainian army is preparing to strike the Crimean Bridge. At the end of last week, the Ukrainian army attacked the Russian ferries Avangard and Conroe Trader in Crimea. Russian sources report that Western weapons, namely ATA CMS and Storm Shadow missiles, were used to strike them. At the same time, the Russian air defense system of Crimea once again failed. Some observers believe that the attack on the ferries may be a sign of preparations for a new attack on the Crimean Bridge. According to this version, Ukraine wants to make sure that Russia cannot immediately count on ferries again as a replacement for the railway route to Kirsch. Ukraine's security service attacked the Crimean Bridge for the first time on October the 8th, 2022. After a truck explosion, two half sections of the road part of the bridge collapsed and the railroad tracks were also damaged. Ukraine's security service attacked the Crimean Bridge again on July the 17th, 2023 using Sea Baby drones. Russian Deputy Prime Minister Marat Kuznolin admitted that one span of the road part of the Crimean Bridge could not be restored. After Ukraine's successful attacks, the Russian occupation authorities additionally fenced the Crimean Bridge with special anti-sabotage boom barriers that can allegedly protect the structure from surface and underwater drones. In February 2024, the commander of the Ukrainian Navy, Vice Admiral Oleksiy Neis Papa said he was convinced that the Crimean Bridge would be destroyed by the end of the year. Next, Russia's target in Europe, Norway's Svalbard Archipelago. Moscow may target Norway's Svalbard Archipelago, also known as Spitsbergen, in its first direct attack on a NATO country. The ambiguity surrounding Svalbard's status within the alliance could divide NATO on whether a Russian move would trigger Article 5, the Collective Defense Clause. Moscow's interest in Svalbard, a demilitarized region, has grown because of Norway's imposition of sanctions, global warming, and Russian concern about defending the western entrance to the northern sea route. Russian interest in the area has intensified because China has joined Russia in using Svalbard for research, access to Svalbard's coal has become more important and a vast privately owned parcel of land is now for sale. Paul Goebel, a former US State Department expert on the countries of the former USSR and ex-CIA analyst, provides a detailed explanation in an article for the Jamestown Foundation. Given Moscow's aggressive rhetoric about NATO and threats to attack one or more of its members if the West continues to support Ukraine, many in Russia and the West have been speculating about where such a Russian move might occur. Most have focused on Poland, the Baltic countries and Finland as possible targets, but perhaps the most likely one is elsewhere, the Svalbard archipelago. Svalbard is part of Norway, a NATO member, but is demilitarized by the provisions of the 1920 Svalbard Treaty, which has currently been signed by 46 countries, including the US, Norway and France. Because of that agreement, NATO remains deeply divided as to whether, in the case of a Russian attack, all the members of the alliance would want to invoke the provisions of Article 5 of the NATO Charter, which requires alliance members to view an attack on one as an attack on all. That division, of which Moscow is well aware, may lead the Kremlin to decide that an attack on Svalbard is less risky than an attack on any other NATO country. The island has fewer than 3,500 residents, of whom approximately a fifth are Russians and a handful are Chinese. Because of its isolation, Svalbard was one of the last European territories whose status remained undefined into the 20th century, with various countries, including Norway, Sweden and Russia, using it as a base for shipping and mining and even claiming it as their own. In 1920, however, 
the Western powers, without Russia's participation, signed the treaty that declared that Norway had sovereignty over the islands, but required that Oslo kept the archipelago demilitarized and permitted the development of other national communities, including, most prominently, the Russians. Ukraine is increasingly replacing people at the front with combat robots. Ukraine is massively using robots at the front to destroy Russian occupiers in order to overcome the shortage of people in the armed forces of Ukraine. According to The Telegraph, this new type of warfare that Ukraine is developing relies more heavily on unmanned and remotely controlled robotic systems than ever before. For months now, Ukrainian troops have been using robots for a variety of purposes, from destroying bridges to delivering supplies to the front lines and evacuating wounded soldiers. There is a great hope that these technological developments will save the lives of Ukrainian military personnel, easing the burden of an acute manpower shortage that experts warn will worsen. The publication writes, Thus, the publication writes about one of the cases when Russian infantrymen tried to seize a Ukrainian bunker in the Avdiivka area of the Donetsk region. The invaders came under intense and accurate machine gunfire, but were stopped by a barrage of return mortar and small arms fire. When the machine gunner's position was eventually overrun, the Russians discovered that their enemy was nothing more than a piece of metal. Most likely, it was one of the combat robots that slowly deploy along the entire front line, writes the Telegraph. Some are equipped with 7.62mm PKT and PKM machine guns, while others are designed for heavier operations and are equipped with 12.7mm Browning machine guns capable of hitting targets over a kilometre away. Ground-based drones can also be equipped with night vision cameras and additional armour to protect them from small arms fire. With their help, the Ukrainian armed forces carry out combat missions including assaults while their operators are located in underground shelters at a distance of about two and a half miles. Thus, the Shablia M2 stationary remote machine gun is mainly used to replace long shifts of Ukrainian soldiers in defence work. The unmanned ground vehicles called Ratel S and Ark 1 can deliver 40 kilograms of explosives under a tank or bunker at a speed of 15 miles per hour. The reusable version can carry and deploy up to two TM62 anti tank mines on Russian positions or logistics routes, artificially intelligent targeting systems that do not require human interaction are also being developed to counter Russian electronic warfare jamming that is disrupting communications between drones and their operators.